Good morning. And welcome. It looks like the snow has come. Another season, another celebration. I thought I didn't need to turn that on until... Technology and I are good friends. <laughs> Our call to worship. As a congregation of the United Church of Canada, we affirm faith in the values and principles of the Christian Church in the practice of Christian stewardship and fellowship in the celebration of faith in the Christ we follow and worship in outreach to the neighboring communities and in the work of the church and society. We affirm our faith in God and our desire to be followers of Jesus. We seek to be a family of faith that commits ourselves to praise God with joyful worship and faithful prayer. To nurture faith and the spiritual growth of people of all ages. To receive and welcome the stranger in our midst. To support one another. To bring justice to the world. To reach out around us. I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn number 509.
I have uh, three announcements to share with you. One is to remind you that uh, next Sunday is our white gift service. So if you're going to have uh, donations to put into your envelope or things to bring for the, the basket or whatever, that'll be next Sunday. It's one of our special services. The following Sunday is our 4040 service. The following Sunday is the baptisms. Um, and we're into the season of Advent starting next Sunday as well. The second announcement, because it, again, it arrived too late to get into the bulletin, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church is doing a Wednesday noon hour worship and soup luncheon for three Wednesdays in December as part of Advent preparation. Different speakers from different denominations. If you're interested, there is a poster in the back, but you can also see me afterwards. The last one is to remind you there's a question box in the back there. If you have any questions, concerns about what's happening here, uh, questions for me or about the United Church in general, write them out, put them in. This Sunday service you saw by your bulletin, it's one of the ones transition planned. It'll be our last one until the new year because we have other services going on. But it, the question box kind of connects with what we did that one first Sunday when we asked you to think about the past, the present, and the future. If you've got things, issues that are holding you back from looking brightly into the future, we need to hear about that and share about that. It's hard to see clear to the future when your eyes are clouded by the past. So if you have anything in your heart that you feel you need to talk with Transition or with myself, please let me know. Uh, or put the question in the question box. We're open. Is there anything else that people need to announce? Then let's just take a moment of reflection. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 579, The Church is Wherever God's People Are, and I invite the children to come forward to the front here. We're going to do Happy Birthday Box. Now, I'm kind of new at this still. I know that you guys hold the box, one on each side of the aisle, and people come forward and put in money for themselves or for people they know who've had birthdays since the last time we did this. Am I missing anything? The one piece I've been asked to acknowledge that our caretaker Murray's birthday is this week. So there's three of you here and three of you there. Do you want to take a box and line up? And you guys three over there, you want to go join them? You don't have to. You want to stand with them and we'll have people who have birthdays come forward and join in the celebration. No birthdays. <laughs> Happy birthday to you.
anymore. I'll take the box, and then we can go up, and I have a story to share with everybody. Thank you. This is from the Gospel of Matthew. It's one of the lessons Jesus tries to teach all of us, you know, how to care for each other and, and be concerned for each other and care about each other. Jesus liked to talk about the kingdom of heaven, but his friends didn't always understand what he meant. How many here understand what that means? There's a few hands, good. Does this mean there is going to be a king with a crown? Asked Mary of Magdala. Will this king ride a white horse or sit on a golden throne? Is that your image of a king? And a prince and a princess? <coughs> Jesus smiled. No, Mary, said Jesus. You need a place to sit? Okay. <laughs> Wherever you're comfortable. No, Mary, said Jesus. It's not like any kingdom you know about. Can I tell you a parable? Sure, said Mary. She liked Jesus' stories. Close your eyes and pretend you can see this kingdom. Pretend you can see a very kind king or queen, whichever you like. Now this ruler, this queen or king, has all the people gathered around. I want all the good people, all the people who have tried to live God's way. I would like them to come and live with me forever, said the ruler. How will we know which people tried to live God's way? This is how you will know, said the ruler. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I felt lonely, you came to be with me. When I was cold, you gave me some of your clothes. When I was sick, you cared for me. When I was in jail, you came to see me. But how can that be, said the people? We don't remember giving you anything to eat or wear. You're the ruler, so you don't need those things from us. When did we do these things for you? You did many kind things for me, said the ruler. When you were kind to one of the homeless people on the street, you were being kind to me. When you gave some money to help poor people, that was the same as giving it to me. You see, all these people you were kind to are part of my family. When you help the poorest and weakest ones in my family, you're helping me. Mary Magdalene smiled. I understand now. The queen or king is the story is God, and everyone is part of God's family. So when we're kind and try to help each other, we're helping someone in God's family. We are really being kind to God. I bet you've all done some kind things in your life. Even saying I love you to somebody is a kind thing. And when you do that, and when you say those words and mean it, you're telling God, and you're taking care of celebrating and praising God. In this community, those here and those on the TV, watching on TV, people in all kinds of other places and other churches also try to live God's way by being kind to each other, working for charity and justice. And that's a celebration. And that's what I'm going to talk about with the tall kids later. But let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you. You can go to Sunday school now. Or you can stay.
our prayer of confession. We have a dream. But we fear the dream and trust the old way, the known way. We have a goal. We are a welcoming and inclusive church and community who come together to worship, reach out, and respond to God and God's world. But the work is hard, and sometimes we take the easy way, the safe way. But God will not let us go. We are given new direction and new hope. God's love prods us into a better world. We are forgiven and made ready to try again. I invite you to stand as you are able for hymn number 104. More voices if you have it on the screen if you don't. Prayer for understanding. In Christ, we are ever emerging. Let us listen, therefore, to God's word and hear its truth for us this day. that better? Today's responsive reading is from the Psalms, Psalms 82 and 146. God stands in the council of heaven, in the midst of the gods gives judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and favor the cause of the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Save them from the hands of the wicked. God sets prisoners free. Restores sight to the blind. God brings those who are dead. Loves those who are just. God cares for the stranger in the land and sustains the widow and orphan. But the way of the wicked God turns to ruin. God shall reign forever. O Zion, your God for all generations. Good morning. If this sounds a little familiar, it's because um, if you were paying attention to the children's story, it's basically the same thing. So Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Thank you. Tony Capello has to fly to Hawaii to speak at a conference. He checks in at his hotel and tries to get some sleep. Unfortunately, his internal clock wakes him at 3 a.m. The night is dark, the streets are silent, the world is calm, but Tony's wide awake and his stomach is growling. He gets up and wanders out into the quiet streets looking for a place to get fried eggs and bacon. Everything is closed except for a greasy dive in a narrow alley. The place reeks with dirt and grunge. Tony doesn't even dare touch the menu. He's afraid if he opens it, something with too many legs to count might crawl out. The guy behind the counter says, what do you want? Somehow, Tony isn't so hungry anymore. He sees a stack of donuts under a plastic cover. I'll have a donut and coffee, he says. That ought to be safe. Then the door swings open. In walk eight or nine prostitutes, just finished with a night's work. The place is small, and they all walk up to the counter. Suddenly, Tony is surrounded by loud-talking prostitutes, smoking and swearing. He gulps at his coffee, hurrying to get away. The woman next to him turns to her friend and says, You know what? Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to be 39. Her friend gets real nasty. So what do you want from me, she said. A birthday party? You want me to get you a cake that says happy birthday on it? The first woman says, oh, come on. Why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you, that's all. Why do you have to put me down? I don't want anything from you. I mean, why should you give me a birthday party? I've never had a birthday party my whole life. Why should I have one now? Tony gets to thinking. He stays to the women of left. Then he says to the fellow behind the counter, do they come in here every night? Yep, says the man. Tony says, the one who was sitting here, does she come here every night? Sure, that's Agnes. She's been coming here for years. Well, she said it was her birthday tomorrow. What do you think? You think you and I could maybe throw her a birthday party right here tomorrow night? This man gets a cute smile on his chubby cheeks. That's great, he says. That's great. He turns around to the window into the kitchen and shouts to his wife who's doing the cooking. Hey, come out here. This guy's got a great idea. Tomorrow is Agnes's birthday wants us to go in with him and throw a party for her right here tomorrow night. His wife comes out from the back. That's wonderful, she says. You know, Agnes is really a nice person. She's always trying to help other people, and nobody ever does anything nice for her. So they make their plans. Tony will be back at 2.30 the next morning. He'll help decorate the place. The man, whose name turns out to be Harry, will make the cake. At 2.30 the next morning, Tony's back. 
He's brought some crepe paper decorations and a large cardboard poster that says, Happy Birthday, Agnes. By 3 o'clock, the diner's looking pretty good. By 3.15, it's crowded with wall-to-wall -wall prostitutes. Harry's wife got the word out on the streets, and every prostitute in Honolulu seems to be in the place. At 3.30, the door swings open, and in walks Agnes and her friend. Tony has everyone ready. They all shout, Happy Birthday, Agnes! And she's flabbergasted. Her mouth drops open. Her legs wobble. She puts her hands to her head and almost falls over, stunned. Her friend grabs her by the arm and leads her to the corner where the birthday cake awaits. The room is exploding with a chorus of Happy Birthday to you. Now she's crying. She sees the cake with all the candles. And Harry, who's not used to seeing a prostitute cry, says rather gruffly, blow out the candles, Agnes. If you don't blow them out, I'll have to do it. So Agnes composes herself, and she blows them out. And everyone cheers. Cut the cake, Agnes, cut the cake. But Agnes looks down at the cake and without taking her eyes off it, says to Harry, look, Harry, would it be all right with you if I, I mean, is it okay if I, do you think it'd be okay if I just kept the cake for a little while? Is it all right with you if we don't eat it right away? Harry doesn't know what to say. He just shrugs and says, Sure, if that's what you want to do, keep the cake. Take it home if you want to. Agnes turns to Tony. She says, is it okay? I live just down the street. Can I take the cake home for a minute? I'll be right back, honest. Agnes picks up the cake like it was the Holy Grail. Slowly, she marches through the room with it high in front of her for everyone to see. She carried her treasure out the door, and everyone in the room watches in stunned silence. And when she's gone, nobody seems to know what to do. So Tony gets up on a chair and says, what do you say we pray? And there they are, in a hole in the wall, greasy spoons, all the prostitutes of Honolulu streets at 3.30 in the morning, and Tony prays for Agnes, for her life, her health, her soul, her relationship with God. When he's finished praying, Harry leans over the counter. Hey, you never told me you was a preacher. What kind of church do you belong to anyway? Tony says, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. Harry thinks about that for a minute. Then he says, no, you don't. There ain't no church like that. If there was, I'd join it. Yes, sir, I'd join a church like that. Here is wisdom for our lives. What kind of church do you belong to? Our focus today is on mission and vision. And in your bulletin, you had a couple of handouts. We're going to start with, I think, with the easiest one, the one called the reality check. You're asked to read each statement and then mark it with a plus if you think that's true, a dash if you think that's not my experience, and a question mark if I'm not sure. We will be gathering these like we did the other Sunday. You don't need to put your name on it. If you need a pen, Sandy has a box over there, and I'll give you a few minutes to go through that list.
as you're finishing that, some of you have finished. The next sheet is this one with the odd shaped boxes on it. If you could also look at that one and fill that sheet out. And again, we'll be collecting them and you don't have to put your name on it.
think most of you are done. If not, you can continue working on it while we do the rather part of our service. We are, we're going to move in now into looking at mission statements. We had said earlier that for the month of November, we were going to try and reduce the number of bulletins. And yet this Sunday, we wanted to make sure that you all got a bulletin. Because if you look at the order of service, you look at the call to worship in your bulletin, that is a mission statement from a United Church congregation. If you look at the prayer of approach, it's a mission statement from another church. If you look at your confession, the first part is a mission statement from one church. The second part is a mission statement from another church. So you have four mission statements in front of you. I want you to read those four mission statements and think about which one do you think best describes central and why? And you'll see there's a response sheet on the back of this sheet. There's a response on the back. You can put down what number you thought was the best to describe central. And one or two words as to why you think it was to describe central.
I saw a few questions, so I may not have explained it well, but that's my fault. Your call to worship is a mission statement. The prayer of approach is a mission statement. The prayer of confession, there's two bolded parts. Each of those separate pieces is a, a, a separate mission statement. So just as a show of hands, how many of you thought that first one, the, your call to worship, best described central? Anybody? Okay. How many thought the second one, the prayer of approach, described central? There's a few. And then the call, the confession rather, the first part, how many chose that one for describing central? And then the last one, the second half of the confession, how many chose that one? That's interesting. Oops. One of those four is central. Any guesses as to which one? Four. That fourth one is centrals, and it got the fewest votes. Which is actually a good thing, because the purpose of this transition is to help us figure out what your mission and vision is. And so what it's saying is you've got a statement, but things have changed since you approved that statement. And we're in a different place. Because all of you, the rest of you, voted for one, two, or three as your best description of central. What we have to do now is find a way to put all those together into a new mission statement that the congregation will have to approve. So I am, here's where you all get a little nervous, but we are looking for anybody who'd like to volunteer to do that. It is not necessarily a direct piece of transition work to write up the new mission statement. But if this, so if there's anybody out there who would like to do that, put these statements together over a copy with the one or two or three of you, put it into a new word, new format, that's all you need to do. Then we put it together and we'll take it to the board and then to the congregation. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I don't want to see, I know I'd be embarrassed by seeing 26 hands go up and I'd have to figure out which one I'm, I'm going to choose. So in the meantime, those 26 of you who are interested, you could write your name on the sheet or come and see me after church. I missed one piece of this. If you go back to that sheet that you were, that last sheet where you're filling out the questionnaire, uh, which one you liked and why, right at the very top. I'm from a church that how would you like to describe Central? Tony belonged to a church that threw birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, and Harry says, there ain't no such church. What kind of a church do you want to be? What do you want people in Brandon to say about Central? What do you want to say about Central? I'm from a church that... Fill in that statement. And while you're doing that, I'm going to make my concluding statements. The reason we look at the mission statement and the reason we're doing it as one of the first pieces of transition is that your mission statement covers everything else. The reason you come to church on Sunday is to fulfill that mission statement. The reason you volunteer is to fulfill that mission statement. The reason you contribute isn't to keep the place nice and warm and cozy. It's to fulfill the mission statement. What's your mission statement? How are you seen by the community? What in your heart? How do you live out 
that story from Matthew. How do we feed the hungry and clothe the naked? That mission statement then becomes the guide for everything you do in this church. All your reports back to the board should reflect that mission statement. Your annual meeting should look over it every year to see if it needs changing. Is it still accurate? Your reports at the annual meeting should tell us how we fulfilled the mission that year, how we hope to fulfill the mission next year. So that's why we're doing it now, because it's, like I say, it's going to color everything from here. If you have questions or concerns, again, there's the question box, so come and see me. These will be gathered during the offering like we were, they did on November the 2nd. Margaret and Sandy will help with the collecting. I invite you now to stand as you are able to sing hymn number 649. In our minute for mission. How many of us have been rejected by our families, friends, and community? How many of us have been kicked out of our homes for being who we are? How many of us have been rejected by our children? For members of the LGBTQ community, these are all two real scenarios. LGBTQ stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, two-spirit, queer, and questioning. Rainbow Ministry is an outreach ministry of Winnipeg Presbytery in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We work exclusively with the LGBTQ community. 
We have presented workshops and led discussions in churches around affirming and inclusivity issues in the church. Our, our work includes giving workshops at the Manitoba province-wide Gay Straight Alliance Conference, speaking at rallies, and providing pastoral care in the community. Bible studies, discussion groups, and a presence at Winnipeg's Pride celebrations. For many members of the LGBTQ community, the church is a place of pain, hurt, and anger. We work with people to show the love of God to all, to show that there are places of faith where all are accepted for who they are born to be. The moment we say the word church or God, many people pull back even if they are missing the spiritual in their lives due to the pain of the past. We are working to overcome this pain and to find a spiritual home for all. Your gifts for mission and service help to offer a compassionate community and healing for all God's people. Please give generously. Show you how times change. John and I were the first ministers for Rainbow Ministry, and back then it was LGB. Our offering. God is not a vague concept, common sense, or sentimental attachment. God is, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Our gifts to the missions and service fund, our money, our time, and our talents, and our gifts given through par, meet God face to face. Now is the time to give. Our offering will now be gathered. Prayer. 
together. Loving and generous God, please fill each of us with your Holy Spirit. Give us the courage to go out into the world to do your work. Please accept our gifts as our faithful response to your presence in the world. Amen. You can be seated. And our choir has an anthem. Just before we do the prayers of the people, one is an announcement I didn't make at the beginning of the service and I should have, uh, that, that Claire Murray died this week and the funeral will be December the 7th. The other is because it's 12 o'clock and we've got a little bit of worship left, if you do have to leave, feel free to do so, but I'm going to cut the, the, the um, I see a new heaven and a new earth. We'll skip that hymn and go into the commissioning. The prayers of the people's response of it. When we encounter bigotry and prejudice, we pray. When we hear jokes that make fun of others, we pray. When we encounter bullies and tyrants, we pray. When we become aware of abuse toward a child, youth, adult, or senior, we pray. When we become aware of abuse toward an animal or the land, we pray. When we see people turned away because of race, abilities, or sexual orientation, we pray. When government policies are passed which are harmful to our community, we pray. Today we are asked to pray for the countries of Burkina Faso, Chad, Malay, Mauritania, and Niger. We pray for Christians who celebrate Christ the King Sunday today, for Sikhs who remember the martyrdom of Guru Tig Bakador on November 24th, and for Baha'is who celebrate the Day of Covenant November 26th, and the ascension of Abdul Baha on the 28th. May these holy days bring us closer to peace. We pray for those who are in need, those we know and those we don't know. We ask that all who are sick in mind, body, or soul will meet someone who will be your presence to them. We pray. Then we're skipping the hymn and going to our commissioning. Beloved, let us love. 
Go in peace to love and serve our God. Amen. This is your last chance.